last Wednesday, I was attending my lady support group. And we were discussing the U.S. election. One of the ladies brought up her concern that there wasn't enough um, discussion about the economy between the two head candidates. And that she wishes they had not focused as much on culture war. I agree. I mean, I agree. Honestly, there was very little discussion about economy, and it was pretty much culture war and personality competition. It, it, it's disgusting watching the U.S. election. Unfortunately, some of the other ladies in the group took offense to this one lady saying this. Um, and I'm hard pressed to understand why. I assume that they think talking about economic issues somehow reduces the value of the trans people under threat and other 2S LGBTQIA plus people, other marginalized groups, women, just because you're talking about the economy. What I think they fail to understand is that you have, in the U.S., these two parties, right? The one party promises a certain number of dollars toward aid of these marginalized groups, and they can't even get that right. And then you have the other group, which turns to those who are suffering and say, look, you have nothing because this other branch here has said that they're going to give this aid to these marginalized people. It's the marginalized people taking it away from you. That has everything to do with the economy. What is economy but how people manage to survive, right? Or groups of people or even whole society. That people have stopped thinking about how to feed themselves and their families, to keep a roof over their heads, to keep the lights on, to keep their themselves warm. Is, is, these are things they shouldn't consider. You're supposed to just shut that part of your brain off, live off cosmic energy, and still have the time and the ability to fight social justice issues. They're, they're linked. Of course they're linked. And in no way does dealing with the economy minimize the other cultural issues. It's only It only seems that way because you have the two branches of the government playing off each other to continue to drive down wages and transfer wealth from the poor and working to the capitalists in particular, in particular the big capitalists. And they're political cronies. And before anyone says, um, oh, that's crony capitalism, not, not real capitalism. All capitalism devolves into crony capitalism. Okay, so I'm just going to nip that right in the bud. You can disagree. You debate in my comments. I'm just kicking you out. But the fact that this was brought up introduced the beginnings of a class analysis, which seems to be taboo in many groups that deal with social justice issues. A, a rigorous class analysis is often called class reductionism. Even though not all social justice issues can be explained by class analysis, 
or all class issues can be explained by social analysis, you'll find that the vast majority of them are somehow put together. So if the party that promises to help the marginalized people were able to do it effectively and at the same time improved the economy of everybody else, this party over here couldn't go around claiming, hey, you're poor because, because you wouldn't be poor. You wouldn't be struggling. You wouldn't be working nine to five plus two other part-time jobs and still not be able to pay your bills. But they can't do it. They can't do it because they both want the same thing. They both want to keep you down so the people they represent can be kept up and they get payout. That's always how that system's been. And frankly, that's how the system is here too. We just disguise it better for now. So anyhow, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, free Palestine and lovelies. Have yourself a fantastic day.